the JMOC podcast. I'm John Rand, and of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgoretcha.com and Attack the D using the promo code JMOC podcast to get 15% off at orgoretcha.com and get the best skins, gloves, and equipment on Attack the D. Be attack minded. And if you're liking what you're seeing, like and subscribe on YouTube because support has been absolutely brilliant so far. And today, I'm joined by former Den manager Stephen Baxter to talk about Den's terrific year they just had and uh, all his coaching experience up to date and uh, everything goes with that. So, we're looking really look forward to chatting to Stephen today. How are you keeping, Stephen? Hi, John. How's things? All good, sir. All is good. Uh, it's a wet Friday afternoon in Cavan, so uh, we're living the dream, Stephen. Absolutely. You couldn't do You couldn't better, get a better time to do something like this. Hundred <laughs> percent. Although staying inside, Stephen, I don't know if it's good for the old head. We've done enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true as well, actually. Yeah, but well, maybe when it's raining, and that's the time to be definitely staying inside. Yeah, hundred percent. So, um, news in the recent weeks, you've obviously uh, stepped down from the Den management job, and obviously a terrific year that you did have with them. But so, uh, what what was the reason behind it? Yeah, it, it was it just time commitment, sir. Yeah, look, it was just it was just time commitments. Um, I thought long and hard about it. Um, we. We'd gone for more or less two years. We started in January 2020 before the word COVID even existed. And then it wasn't long after that that the uh, whole COVID thing kicked in. Um, I suppose then we, obviously we got to the 2020 championship final, which was delayed. So oh, yeah. kind of doing stuff legally, of course, um, over the lockdowns and everything else. And it just went on and on. And it was tough going, you know, just to keep everything going on the thing. But look at, um, Super bunch of lads. I actually would have loved to stay on. Like, they're the ideal team for anyone to take over. I know Danny Brady's taking them over. He's a lucky man. Um, but like the commitment them boys have given me over the last two years is absolutely phenomenal. And you know, like it's, it's super two years to be honest with you. Like the last five, three or four months with them was unbelievable. Between winning the junior final and the the, the campaign through Ulster, and then even the All Ireland series that we're lucky enough to. To get involved in as well so no look it was it was really enjoyable unfortunately um it's just going what 10 years training senior teams at this stage so i think i just needed a break for 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 my own sanity maybe let alone anything else 100 you're obviously managing the uh, under eight ballet McHugh, uh, girls so how are you finding that <laughs> yeah that, that can be just as tough sometimes as well we're training them there last night so um, that can be just own, it brings its own challenges, shall we say. But no, nah, look, it's really enjoyable. It's great to see the kids running out and having a bit of fun as well. Like, you know, you talk about lockdown there, and you're 100% right. But look, we, we, we've got a big number of kids out there in Bellamy Q, so our whole aim is just to give them fucking and keep them involved in the GA, which is which is so important. Like We would have seen it in Den and even Bellamy Q over the last number of years. Like. The GA is everything. I would have said it several times. It's a wonderful, wonderful organisation. I know um, the, the people give out and talk about it as well, but the, it's the backbone of everything in, in a parish. And I think when you're going well or you're not going well, I think the GA will, will always be there. And that is really, really, really important. Absolutely, Stephen. Absolutely. I suppose we, we can touch on uh, to the success you obviously did have at the Den Senior Footballers, and obviously it was um, it, it was really brilliant. And obviously you did play like the replay of that 2020 final against Temple Port. Temple Port got over the line, and oh, they went to like the intermediate championship. He's got another crack at it. He just got over the line against uh, Drung. So we can touch on maybe to the cabinet and the things. I suppose Stephen. So I suppose to get the kind of boys uh, back up and going for that game against Strong, and I suppose that whole campaign. And right, lads, put our head down. We we can try to get over the line this year, and he's did. That obviously took serious results, Stephen. It did actually, yeah. Like Temple Court deservedly beat us on, on the evening. We, we actually had a lot of work done for that Temple Court game, but it was just one of those things um, that didn't go well in the day. Um, we took a, we, we were planning to take a week off after it anyway, which we did. Um, there was no backfighting, there was no nothing. It just, I think the lads recognised that. D- didn't go well in the day from them and um, I suppose along the line we made our mistakes as well and we learned from it but we took we took a week off and went back training the following Friday night and it was actually the largest training session I actually had I think at 34 out on the following Friday night so I suppose that tells the story in itself I was kind of I didn't know what I, I had a fair idea what I was going to face when I got to cross keys and um, was I expecting 34 probably maybe a little bit under 30 to be honest with you but when you see 34 lads there raring to go, um, so it was absolutely fantastic. That, I suppose, told a tale in itself, but number one about the lads, and number two, the focus then for the year ahead. We started off then the following Thursday night, so we really had a, a very short turnaround. We had killed the, the very first game 
um, in, in the championship. So we played them down in Mulhorn on Thursday and we comprehensively beaten them. So it was good just to get back on, on track then. Um, we had much of Connacht, I think it was the second game, much of Connacht in 2020. We struggled to get a one-point win over them. And on that Sunday in Rammer, we, we struggled to get a draw, but we did. And in one way, that's, that's good signs in itself. Uh, following that, then we had, I think it was Red Hills, and we, we bet them. And then the last game was against Drummerley, which we pulled away at the end. Drummerley gave us lots of it above in Terry Kyle Park, to be fair. Sorry, Swan and Bar, we actually had the third game. And that was actually, it was handy enough, one in Breffney. And then we, we played Drummer, Drummer Lee then in the last game in Terry Kyle Park. It was a good competitive game, in fairness, mm-hmm. Drummer Lee. And then I suppose our fitness that we'd build up over, you could read, I suppose, fairness to say over two years, and um, probably stood as we pulled away. And then we had a tough game against Kildallan in, in the in the quarterfinal below in Baltorbet. Um, we're missing a few lads. Mossy and Cavell was kind of in and out with injuries as well. And, couple of injuries there but we got over them in the end we put away well in the end against that and then we had a couple of titanic battles with our friends and not bride um, so the first day was a draw and then the second day was, was an unbelievable performance in fairness and we actually bet them well in, in the second day but it was one of those days that i remember saying to jerome and the warm-up these boys are flying our boys are flying so and they actually put in one hell of a performance and then drum look at we went in as favorites um, it probably was said and right throughout whoever won between Den and Ockbride was going to win it. But we didn't underestimate Drung basically because of what happened against Templeport in, in August. So again, it was a really focused performance. We only had a one week to prepare, which is probably a, a blessing in disguise. And, and Drung came out strong, particularly in the first half. But I think that experience of the Templeport game we kind of just kept at and kept at and pulled away relatively easy in the, in the second half against Strong and thankfully it was a huge relief just to win that game, particularly with the teams coming down from the uh, intermediate this year, Arba and Drum Lane, winning the junior championship this coming year was always going to be a, a, a massive ass of anyone, even the two teams that is coming down. So thankfully we got across the line against Strong and we celebrated, so we did. We enjoyed it. <laughs> no doubt you did. No doubt you did. And I suppose, yeah, no, like, obviously, like, getting bet by uh, Templeport that time and, you know, like the, the ins and outs of that. And obviously, um, getting the lads back up. Was it just a case, Stephen, maybe of saying, like, we are a quality outfit? You know, we can get over the line now. If we do put our heads together, you did put your heads together. You screwed over the line. It sounded like an unbelievable journey in the junior championship. So it was probably just a case of, like, right, lads, put the bit of graft in and we will get over the line here. I think so, yeah. Look, at we we had a uh, the division two league before that as well, and we're playing the likes of Lara, Butler's Bridge, uh, Shercock, like really quality teams. And you know, like we we were very competitive in those games. So to be competitive against them sort of teams, you're not a bad side. And I think the boys realised that. And um, look at that bit of experience playing division two. Like the two best teams in the junior championship last year was Knockbride and. Then and they were playing Division Two football. It's the same back in 2017 as involved in Ballon That um, the two best teams in the junior championship at that time was Drummond Lee and Ballon McEwen. They were playing Division Two football. So you can see the gulf in in each division. You come up Division Three, Division Two, Division One. There's a massive step up. And even playing the likes of Lara, the pace of that game was was unreal. It was it was a super game of football. And then you had the likes of Shercock. They were still senior at the time. And, they gave us a, a good physical battle that time above in in Shercock. We actually came back well to actually draw that game in the end. So look at it, it was I suppose the bit of work that we actually done and then playing that sort of quality teams is you won't you won't beat that sort of stuff. You definitely won't, Steve. And I suppose kind of maybe on that and briefly on that, the, the kind of quality that is in Cavan at the minute, the quality of teams and the kind of standard, I suppose it does set you probably, probably well up for the Ulster kind of campaign. So what do you make, can you make of the quality maybe in the junior championship? Because realistically, you see teams like the Drumlay and Arvid, they've got out of the junior championship this year. So, you know, it really is a nip and tuck. Yeah, look, at realistically, you probably you could nearly split the junior championship into three sections. You've got the teams that will contest it, the teams that will be there or thereabouts, and then unfortunately, there's always going to be two or three, two maybe two or three teams that won't be at the races at all. Um, and then it's the look of the draw as well. Like in fairness, Drung had a very very good run through. Shannon Gales actually had a very good run through as well. And and given the day, like you have to remember, I think it was two three years ago, Shannon Gales came very close to beating Kim Kerr in, in a junior final. So you don't take any team for granted, but there probably is that little bit of a gap, and I think it's probably maybe in senior as well. Intermediate is probably the most competitive in, in Cavan, 
Um, you nearly don't know who's going to win that from one year to the other. The senior championship, look at the senior championship is probably the same. You got the top teams, you got the teams that can contest, and the teams that will be not contesting, I suppose, the other way of putting it. 100%, 100%. And obviously, you're naming out all the games you're playing there. and It was an absolute list of games. It seemed like a serious journey. And obviously, there is a lot of kind of quality teams in the junior championship, really, when you do think about it, like some uh, Drum Lee and obviously Jung, the team you got in, into the final. So, obviously, like, what was the kind of the form and mood like after the Temple Port game? Because obviously, you yes, were probably favourites going into a Temple Port, of course, take it over the line. So, what was maybe the, the morale, the mood like? Because obviously, you did expect to win and you just didn't get over the line. No, we did look at it. Everyone was extremely disappointed. I remember being in the stand. I even got a bit of food in, in the stand after that. And everyone was just devastated. And it was just silence. And there was no fighting. There was no, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you play that? Why didn't you do There was nothing like that. I think everyone just looked at themselves. And we learned an awful lot. And we'd still say that to the day. We learned so much from from that that game. Like Tempport really pushed up on us. Our kickouts were absolutely crucified. Um, our big players was taken out of it. We just didn't play our game. We made so many mistakes that day, um, but we learned an awful lot. But we, we stuck out together. And I suppose when you think about the Ulster campaign that came after that, we actually won that game against Temple Park. That would never have happened. So I think if you, if you ask the boys what would they prefer, I don't think there's anything that would. I think there's only one answer for that one. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and obviously pushing on to the year. You did have uh, getting over the line against Strong, and obviously it was, it was a serious team because we know how, uh, how dr what Drum can be like in finals and when they get to the pinner of color. So the, the journey into twenty twenty one championship was an unforeseen year once again. But I know we have the full full deck of cards this year, Stephen. So getting the lads pumped up, the train and everything goes with it. It was a quick turnaround after Temple Park game. So realistically, Stephen, it probably said that he's just down to the ground. Absolutely, yeah, and I suppose looking the fact that you had the work done as well, fitness wise and everything else, we were concentrating football and just working those little things just tweak those little things that wasn't going well for us and that's what we did like we had a what we had nearly a month off between the drum game and the first round of ulster and we played the antrim team we didn't again we didn't know what to expect and we had a video work done on them but um took a week off more or less after the the drum game let the boys go and enjoy themselves which they're more than entitled to do and then we we worked really, really hard for that Antrim game, and I suppose we got over it more, a lot easier than we actually expected. Um, we thought we were going to get a lot tougher challenge than we actually did, and we had a really good performance that day, that even actually in Breffney Park, and then it, it geared it us, it geared us up nicely for the Desert Martin team that came out of Derry. They actually won the junior championship in Derry the previous year as well, so they're a really, really strong team. It was a super game of football that day, blowing Clonus. And we pulled away in the end, and there was some excellent performances. And I was just saying that to you earlier on, like Michal Gaffney took out their, their, their best player, which is Lachlan Murray. Um, he won an All Ireland minor with, at full forward for Derry 2020. Um, he, he destroyed him that day. Michal actually set up to go, uh, Brandon's goal. Um, he messed way up to the corner forward position, and between one thing and another, the ball ended up in the back of the net, which was was super and he's got an Ulster All-Star out of that and that was probably one of the best performances I would have ever seen from a, a back. And then you Cavell that day as well, Cavell Kyogen, again another lad that won an Ulster All-Star. Um, that day if you watched, watched the video back it was just absolutely phenomenal. He, he could not be handled whatsoever, you know, people talk about Ted and Ben and Sean and lads like that but we're lucky that we had maybe four or five lads that can really test teams and then we actually only had a week turnaround to the Ulster final when we played the Downings. Uh, the Downs actually had pulled off, I suppose, a, a scrap of their own against uh, Sean McDermott's team, which were favourites. I think they were red hot favourites for the Ulster Championship. So to bet them, but again, we had a work done, and I suppose I, I've looked at that Ulster final game a number of times at this stage. But the really pleasing thing about that, you could actually see the work that was done in the training field come off, and that particularly the third goal that we got started off in the full back line, moved the ball quickly up the field, laid off runners. It was a the super goal where it was James Brady I think got the last goal. Mark McSherry, Mark McSherry got a similar goal before that. So it was really, really pleasing performance and it's just unreal to win an Ulster title at any level and in Clonus as well, which made it extra, extra special for I suppose the Clonus has a special place in Ulster football and especially in Cavan people Cavan football people's heart as well. So it was absolutely super. 100%. Obviously, that kind of Ulster campaign, that journey, and obviously that game down at Clonus, and it was just an absolutely terrific second half performance. Every lad just dug deep, they just played for each other. I was just so, so impressed by it. Like, Gaffney 
brothers were sensational. Uh, putting the bodies on the line and the, the forwards are absolutely brilliant. Everyone had a great day at the office of Mossy Core. Still going strong at the tender age of uh, 54, uh, Stephen. So uh, it was just terrific stuff. Yeah, look, Mossy probably put in uh, a man and match performance that day as well. Like he caught balls under the crossbar, he set up stuff as well. And you had Ushin in front of him, like Ushin Karen, and probably is, you know, we're, we're going to the Ulster All Stars tonight, and you, you kind of wonder why Ushin didn't get one. But then you look at the lads that actually got them in his place, which is the Brannigans from Kilku. So that's probably no, why. They're Ushin not did, bad, then, boys. They're not didn't, bad. Didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't get one. Like, it really was. and you know, we Conor Riley come in as a, as a and we had young Kayla McCabe as well and Leon Kobe come in from the yeah, yeah. campaign. So we're lucky to get that fresh bit of blood in as well. But luckily it was 15, 16, 17 lads. But as I said to you, we we 34, 30 out training most times. Like there was competition even to get placed in the squad. And you know, that that drives a team on. Like if you're only 17, 18 lads of training, you don't actually you don't work in the quality, you don't work in the intensity. But to me, and I know it can be a saying, and maybe people don't believe you, but you, if you have a strong bench or if you've got another bunch of lads pushing them lads, it brings you to a different level. And, you know, in fairness to the 17, 18 uh, lads that didn't start in some of the Ulster games, they, they were just as important as the Brandons and the Cavells and Oshins and Mossies and Teds and Sean's and all these guys. They were just fantastic. I suppose, Benary, what's said at half time, maybe in the Ulster final or even the semi final, uh, Stephen, can it get over the line in these games? Because obviously, like, it was really terrific stuff. It was really workman like performances. So, you know, what, what's nearly said is it from the players within? Is it just that fighting experience or just maybe what's going on, like, the, like off the pitch? Maybe does that kind of sport lads on? You know, what really is it, Stephen, just to make it look so impressive? Well, look, I suppose, in fairness, I, I personally leave a lot of the stuff to the boys to make their own decision, have a chat, and they'd always have their chat at half time among themselves. And um, that day against Darren in the Ulster final, like we had kicked a lot of wides, but I suppose it was important that we just didn't panic and kept doing what we were actually doing. And um, the Desert Martin game was slightly different, that we were putting them under huge pressure. Like and I think they did kick 16, 17 wides, but if you look back at the game, um, the amount of pressure, I think it was one bad wide, one that you classified as a bad wide, that your man should have put over the bar. All the rest, it was pressure by Michal, by Mossy, by Oshin, by Leon, by Mark, by James, by Kalon. You know, Beanie, whoever it was, it was just the the Desert Martin game was to me one of the best games I would have seen, and definitely that was involved. And it was just an absolutely phenomenal game. Percent, obviously, like you know, feeding off that, and obviously, like obviously, like, it being completely um, well, also herself from then, so I kind of ha- had to share for someone that day. So it was really kind of just it was just an unbelievable performance, and I nearly think a lot of cabin teams should really watch that back if they're ever looking for a bit of desire work rate hunger everything goes with that Stephen. it really uh, is a fantastic example of it oh absolutely yeah and like the boys themselves the shackles are off when they won the junior championship and what uh, nothing to lose going into Ulster. and i suppose it just gained momentum and like in fairness the support we would have got right throughout the, the county it was very evident and um, the amount of support messages text messages whatsapp emails facebooks everything it was absolutely unbelievable and we fed into that and I suppose it just gave, it was just something different as well. It was a different thing. And I remember saying to someone after the, I think it was the Antrim game, like, fear no one in Ulster. And to me, maybe in the past, Cavan team going into Ulster campaigns, fear in other teams. But in fairness to the lads, they feared absolutely no one in Ulster. And I think that actually stood to them as well. And it seen them, it seen them get across the line. Percent. I was kind of booking that trend of Cavan's kind of success in the Ulster club because a lot of a lot of teams when they do win their county title, right lads, that's it. Ulster's a bonus, so to kind of book that train to have the journey you did have to win an Ulster title, Stephen, in the impressive manner that you did do, it really is a serious goal in itself. We know about the quality of teams you did play in Clonus and everywhere else, Stephen. So, you know, to book the train, that has to be some of the proudest days of your life. Oh, absolutely, it was unbelievable. Like, we, in fairness, we got great support. Like, we, we trained in Bellinock and Mead for the midweek session because of the boys in Dublin and the facilities that they have up there, which is second to none. We use Bellamy Q as well. And, you know, that was kind of the goodwill that was, was given towards us. Breffney Park really accommodated us as well. So, you know, it's, it's a goodwill. Little, little things feed of that and it's a, it's a new adventure and it's something different. And I suppose you got the one game, the, the win in Ulster and that kind of put the boys, the chest out of the boys. And then you got the semi-final and you're looking forward to an Ulster final, which doesn't happen too too often. Ted, look, he's got a, a Ulster Senior Championship medal the, week, the year before, but I think I, there's one thing that I always stands out. Like any team that wins a, 
whether it's an Ulster or an All Ireland club title, that all this all title, that all this say a club title means a lot more than a, a county title for the obvious reasons as well. So we we're lucky enough to get an Ulster medal, and in my opinion, after an All Ireland medal, it's probably the most converted medal that you'll actually get in in the country. If you ask any footballer in the country after an All Ireland medal, what would they prefer? And I think an Ulster medal. And thankfully, all those boys actually have an Ulster medal coming to them and rest nicely on the mantelpiece for for years to come. And, you know, like it's it's something that will live with them forever. You know, that they're part of an Ulster title winning team. That you know, there's not too many of those in in Cavan. So they're 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 I suppose a group of lucky and privileged men, and and they do appreciate that. And that's one thing that I would have always admired about them that they're always a super bunch of lads. And you know, you couldn't you couldn't speak highly of them. I suppose let's kind of talk about the team itself. Obviously, the likes we all know about the heads, Mossy Cors, this world, Ben, and like from one to fifteen, even the bench is it is real quality, Stephen. I suppose like again the belief in these lads because realistically, then the last couple of years they really weren't anywhere to be seen, and obviously until you probably came in, we did see them in 08 and 09 senior county finals, and obviously Calvin Gales played the both days. So realistically, there wasn't much success in the last couple of years, Stephen. They weren't really seen seen about the place probably for a want of a better phrase, Stephen. So getting that belief into the lads and. Just just get, realizing that they are absolutely brilliant players, Stephen. That's the job itself. To a certain extent, it is. But if you actually look at the age profile of the team, they're all very young men, and probably at underage level, they would have won at, at various levels. So they probably brought that little bit of um, confidence with them and that bit of winning mentality with them. Um, I suppose over the last number of years, they got that little bit older, they got that little bit wiser, a little bit stronger, um, which stood to them as well. And in fairness to the coaches that was there before them, like. You know, and I know that you don't develop footballers over a year or two years. It, it's developed over a lifetime, and the amount of work that goes is that's going in at then at the minute, let alone what has gone in at the past. I know Seamus Dunne, was Ted and Sean's father would have done a lot of work with them as well down through the years. And you know, th these boys come to me as as good footballers. You, you don't train them to be footballers, and um, like a couple of them would have won McCrory's or involved in McCrory cups as well. And there's a lot of guys would have played county level at some stage. You got Mark, obviously Mossy. Oshin, uh, James, Mark, Caelan, um, Sean, Ben, Ted. So there's, there's a lot of guys there would have played county football as well. So I was, I was kind of probably lucky to get them at, at the right time. Mm. Um, as you said, there's a lot of quality in between 16 and 34, 35. Um, like Mark Fagan, we, we, he didn't play the Ulster final, but when Conor Courtney came in and, and stepped into the plate and you couldn't fall the absolute fossils performance that that day in, in the in those the finals so again it just goes to show the work that the subs have to put in to to get to that level because if you try to throw someone in for the sake of it that day you probably would get caught out but in fairness to connor he, he really had a super a super game that day a really really steady game in, in goals Oh, it's brilliant strength and depth so important Stephen so we're kind of uh, touching on to like the all uh, the, the all Ireland campaign you did play um the Manchester champions obviously up in Cross McGlen so that was obviously uh, a, a good test test for yourselves because it's really going in it, into the unknown I know they're a big physical team to get over the line against them and um it, it won convincingly in the end so the all Ireland uh, series Stephen I suppose what, what way did you treat it obviously because obviously the old success was absolutely brilliant so all Ireland um you know a journey like that for a cabin team is done for St. Stephen, so exciting times. Yeah, it was, and like that, that also finals played the week before Christmas, so it was actually a nice Christmas around around Cross Keys and the surrounding areas. And uh, we, we gave them the two weeks off. We came back, I think it was the Tuesday night after the New Year's or Wednesday night. Uh, Kevin Downs came in to help us, help us out with the training. So we, we took that uh, English game very well, or the very serious, I should say. Um, we got a couple of videos after we watched them, but we just didn't know what to expect. Um, we knew that the English teams would always uh, cause trouble for the Ulster champions in the past. And the Donegal teams would have, I know 17 and 18 Donegal teams just struggled across the English champions. 19 Black Hill went across to the UK and they just got across the line as well, obviously 2020. So we took it quite seriously, we were a big physical team. Um, and probably a lot better than we actually thought. We had in the game for two weeks, which probably didn't help things, or even a month, you could say. So we did get across that line across McGlenn. Um, the Kerry team then in the semi-final, Grinny Gwilla, we knew that they were, look, to be honest with you, we knew it was going to be tough, but we did think that we could beat them. There was no two ways about it. We had a lot of work done on them. We trained extremely hard for that game. 
um, down in Tullamore that day. Look, we just conceded goals, which we didn't do in any, in any of the championship games this year. And just those early goals destroyed us. Um, very, very good side. Uh, very physical, very fast. They're playing Division One league football this year in Kerry with the Austin Stacks and uh, Kieran Rahalis and all these teams. So they are really a, a, a very strong team. But that just the head start we gave them that day, we just couldn't, we couldn't tr- trade it back. And like in fairness to the lads, they kept going to the very end. They just kept going to right to the end. And unfortunately, we just wasn't going. And someone said after the game, we just got beaten by a better team. And I suppose uh, that's the only little bit of comfort that you actually have is you did actually get better bet by a better team that they got beaten in the All Ireland final. Um, I think a bit of food poisoning the night before didn't really help them, but um, look, they got beaten by a point after two points after extra time that day against the Mayo champions. But um, look, it was obviously disappointing we got that cl- close to Crow Park. Um, we I suppose that was our target at the start. Even you only got, got as far as Crow Park, but obviously you got to Crow Park. You'd want to win it then after that. But it was close. It was close, but again, it was a good bit away, unfortunately, in the very end. And obviously, uh, you could let the team you did play, and obviously, like we everyone was there, like a good cabin contingent was that, and obviously the, the, the Kerry kind of mindset, attack and football, always is going to seek through with that. So, did you kind of expect them to come kind of be top of the pops, like the kind of style of play that they did have, because it was just like letting hairs into a field, the way the way they were transitioning the ball up the field, Steve? And so, did you nearly expect that kind of quality? No, we did. Well, look, we did expect quality. We want to expect that. We've seen them. We've seen the video after against them against the Skellig Rangers in the Kerry final, um, and that was a very close game. That was nine eight, and we kind of focused our own game plan around that. Now we we followed them through Munster, which was a complete waste of time. We actually, we sat in Canada, all had the misfortune of going down to uh, Mallow to watch them in the Munster final against the Tipperary crowd. And Ballina was the team, and it was just. Of terrible stuff, really. To be honest with you, um, the, the Tipperary team was that far behind them, um, so it probably wasn't a great uh, game to watch by any manner of means. We didn't pass any marks that game, to be honest with you, because it was just a, a, a washout. We we concentrated on that Skellig Rangers game a good bit, and um, look, at, if we hadn't given away the concede early goals, who knows? But like they got an eight point head start. It was eight points in the end, so. We, we kept with them about that unfortunate period of time that we conceded the goals. 100%, Stephen. I suppose uh, kind of people, the discussion around that game is, and you know, is it maybe just up to kind of cab clubs to kind of get up to that kind of level that, you know, Kerry maybe is at, like Dublin and this kind of world, because that was obviously a Kerry team that he's where playing. So was it just up to maybe cab clubs to maybe get up to that standard and that kind of same competitive edge? Because we know Ulster doesn't look like it's a massive problem for some cab teams, but I see when we could do get to that maybe All Ireland series, Stephen, that it is a bit of a problem. It probably is. Like one thing that would have been very evident with that Kerry team is that how quick they actually um, moved the ball. The transition play was absolutely lightning fast. Um, and that's probably what we walked into a couple of traps that day and they just moved the ball so quickly out. But like we tried to focus our game a good bit on that, moving the ball quickly as well. So look, I think the Calvin teams are going the right direction. Um, again, it's the luck of the draw. Um, but all you can do is, is keep at Like there isn't that big of a step up, I think. People have it in their head, all that carry that they can't be beaten. But I, I think that definitely could have been beaten. Obviously, the Mayo team showed that they could. Um, but look, it was just it's the breaks in the day because that day against us, they couldn't kick it wide. And then the very first day in the, in the All Ireland final, from the throw up, they went straight through and they buried the ball wide. So look at that. It's the day. It's a look at the day as well. So um, no, look at this. One of those things. But I think, as I said to you earlier on, I think. People kind of fear going into these teams, and I think mm-hmm. you've actually fear going into play the likes of the Kerrys or the Donegals and the Mayos or Tyrone's. You're, you're already five, six points down. You have to have that belief. You have to go for it. And look, it's, it's, it's if you do that and you lose that way, like we could have went very defensive against the Kerry team. We do, we we've never done it. We 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 do have our own systems. We have our own set of defensive systems. And people said, why do you not go defensive against them? We had no reason to go defensive against them. Okay, they scored five goals after it. But if we knew they were going to score five goals, we would have put 15 lads behind the ball. But that's not us. That's just the way we play. We moved. We have our own style. That style got us to another in semi-final. Unfortunately, probably two or three mistakes, maybe a questionable or two referee decisions. They got three goals off them straight away and four goals. 
the fifth goal was a class goal in fairness but would that fifth goal have went in if we weren't chasing the game I probably not well it would have been a different game so look at it's you just got to you got to be playing at that level to be able to improve it's no different than having division four compared to division one where do you want where do you want to be you want to be in division one you want to play in mm-hmm. better football isn't mm-hmm. it? the conversation we had earlier on about division the, the standard and junior championship if you're playing division two football compared to division three football you're obviously going to be better footballers and that's probably where the Kerry team was that day like as I said they're playing division one football against the very best in in Kerry so I wouldn't fear any Kerry team again I'd love to play them again um, but maybe someday Someday soon, hopefully, Stephen. I suppose, and that's kind of what I'm kind of touching on. And obviously, you make a very good point. Like, if if you're going in with the mindset that oh, sure, it's a Kerry team, it's a Mayo team, it's a Dublin team, you're five or six points down. So, is it kind of creating that mindset? Maybe within Cavan and maybe a couple of other counties, but definitely within Cavan. Uh, the last couple of years, and I, I, I we we have got the under twenty one All Ireland semi finals, have a good over line. So, it's nearly creating that mindset, Stephen. We are good enough. We do for the players. And just again, it just probably bodes into this belief factor, maybe that has been uh, missing in Cavan the last couple of years. I, it probably has. I, I, I think so. I, I I can't speak for other teams, but I just know this year in in Den we we said, look, we're going to go for it. We fear no one. Um, like in fairness, we the Antrim team if they came and they gave us everything. The Derry team was excellent. They really are an excellent team. And like the Donegal team, like the Donegal 2017, the Donegal team won the won Ulster in 2018. The Donegal champions won Ulster. 2019 was the Monaghan team that won Ulster. 2020 there was none and 2021 like we bet the Donegal team who bet the Monaghan team and so like there is quality there like you didn't play weak teams in this so but no it's I, I think you're right look at I, I think if you fear anything if you fear anything in life you're, you're already on, on a back step so don't believe in taking too many back steps so we're just we, we enjoyed it and look at I think that's the key thing as well John we did enjoy it we absolutely loved every minute of it and, People said it afterwards, and the players I heard it all place saying, geez, I can't believe this. And a little place in, in South Cavan is after winning the Ulster Championship. Mm. You know, it, it was fantastic. And the goodwill that came out of it was just, it's brilliant. Like, too many times you hear all the bad stories and all the negative stuff and everything else. And then it's very easy for that to overshadow the, the good stuff, the powerful stuff. And, you know, and, you know, I was only speaking to some of the lads there during the week, and we're just saying, like, that, that'll never be taken from us. And, even the worst days you're having and you're, <laughs> you're having a bad day at work or whatever and you just think back to that final whistle going even come back to cross skis that night and it's just it's days that like that live you for live with you forever so it's it's fantastic absolutely fantastic and suppose Stephen okay, when you look back and the whole journey I suppose in 2020 to 2022 Stephen what makes you the proudest and obviously the Ulster campaign and the county title was absolutely brilliant and uh, to get to, uh, so close in the All-Ireland series so what kind of makes you proud about it because we see in management these days so much time goes into it it's like a full-time job you know you have to this sort you have to that sort and you're probably taking a break on uh, nearly on account of it all this year Stephen so what makes you proud because like so much time does go into it you know the success you do have in the field is a receipt for that work you put in oh, it is look at what what made look at the, the players what what they gave me was absolutely phenomenal it really was and it was so enjoyable going over there and training them and having the crack with them and you know obviously we went down through we had some some low days over there as well um but it just it's just an adventure and it's the you know the, the everyone got on there was no arguing there was no row and there was it was just it was just the adventure that it was and i suppose it was different times and we were doing different things and lads were out running on their own and lads running out in twos and threes and i suppose maybe that built up the bond and look at maybe it was just the difficult times that was in the area kind of made us that little bit more difficult or that bit more enjoyable and it took people's minds off things and it was just it was absolutely fantastic it was just it was unbelievable to a certain degree and to me i think the fact that we won in the clones to me that's the that was probably the highlight of the whole thing um it was i never played in clones some of the lads probably never played in clones i remember laughing with a couple of friends afterwards like normally you're on the hill or you're in the stand or you you, you know what goes on before the games as well and, and days like that and 97 when when Calvin bet Derry that day and you know like and then it's you it's it you're you're part of that day and you're you're the Ulster you're part of the Ulster winning um, champions so it's just fantastic. 
hundred percent, Stephen, hundred percent. And obviously, you did kind of touch on to that there, the stuff that kind of did go off, the, uh, did go on off the field, and obviously, Dan has been really hit with tragic, tragic stuff in the last couple of years. So, you know, really having success was absolutely brilliant for Dan because obviously, we've seen players on the field of play like they lost their brothers and uh, unfortunately to suicide stuff and uh, stuff like that, Stephen. So to have the success you did have, it gave people maybe a break, you know, to go to the games, win an Ulster title, get to an All Ireland semi final, win a county title, Stephen. Then, like no other team, really did deserve it, Stephen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you look at yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on. It did take people's minds off it. Um, and I suppose another way of looking at it as well is, and maybe it's the mentality of, of the lads, they all stuck together. If there was a problem, we we, we those problems after the, the junior final that we lost. And look, we all stuck together. We talked about it. We worked on it together. And I suppose that's that's a message in itself that if you know if there is an issue or it is a problem you got to talk you got to work together you got to you got to go and you got to find solutions and there is solutions out there and i suppose just go and asking for it and, and doing it is, is the key thing but look at it it did distract a lot of people there's no two ways about it and i suppose that made it extra more special around around cross keys as well so no it was, it was absolutely fantastic yeah Tell me about the then captain, uh, Mr. Gaffney's speech after the county final was absolutely brilliant. He had a star year. He was one of probably your best players really throughout. So, you know, uh, to, to get up to speak like he did after the game, obviously, you know, there's more there's more important things in life going on. But obviously the success you did have really did give people a great distraction, Stephen. So a great man and uh, one for the future. Oh, super lad. I remember when I, when I got the den job first, you know, the talk of captaincy came up and everyone said it to me, beanie, 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 beanie. And like, if you, you, you should hear some of, the, some of the speeches that he gives to the lads before they actually, before training, during training, if something wasn't going right, before games, after games, you know, it's just phenomenal. And that's the sort of man, and I, I don't think he rehearses these things. That's the, that's, that's the quality of it. I don't, obviously, he thinks of some things. But he's just phenomenal. I've seen him with kids. I've seen him going and speaking to kids. And he's just, look, he's, he's just that, he's a gentle giant. And that's what he is. And he's an absolute gentleman. And the way he goes around, the way he presents himself, and his family as well. He, he, he's absolutely lovely people. His mother, his brother, his father. Absolutely the salt of the air people. But you cross that man on a football field and it's a completely different story. And, <laughs> um, you know, again, we, we, we talked about Oshie not winning because of the Kilku boys. Being he was up against a lad called Connor Glass for the, the mid, midfield role for, for yeah. the Ulster All-Stars. And somehow he lost out to Connor Glass. And so we look at that's, I don't, I don't think, it, I know for a fact it doesn't bother being the individual awards. I think he, he wanted that junior championship. And then he was lucky enough to be an Ulster winning captain as well. But... Look, realistically, there's so many captains on that team. It's just unreal. And he's the lad that lifted the cup. Everyone sees him. But, you know, there's, there's 34, 35, 36 captains. And they all play their own, their own different parts. And, you know, he takes the toss. He, he goes up for the cup. But you do need leaders all throughout the pitch. And we, we actually had them. And the leaders, leaders work in different ways. And I suppose that's just... Beanie's uh, leadership spaces. It was funny actually. We we actually went looking for games in for challenge matches uh, in advance of the Ulster Championship game and mm. contacted the Roscommon champions and unfortunately they couldn't. But the response they actually sent back was unfortunately we can't. But we actually seen your your captain's speech. It was absolutely inspirational, and they just congratulated on that as well. So it did. It actually went throughout the country that that speech. I think it was Paul Fitzpatrick put the speech up or was the mm. county board put the speech up and it went. It really did go viral. But it was absolutely. It was, it was you know the hair stand up in the back of your neck here just thinking about it. So, but an absolute gentleman, and that I think that's. I think that's the best way to describe being an absolute gentleman. Hundred percent, Stephen. Hundred percent. Suppose how important is all like it, you know the football, the GA, Stephen, too, is all because obviously I think what's that saying? You, you only miss something when it's gone. So during the whole COVID, it was gone. Games were pulled, training was gone. So lads were maybe training in pods or doing wee bits and pieces, Stephen. So it is so vitally important for the times maybe Dan did have as a community. It was a fantastic outlet, uh, outlet, Stephen. So it is really vitally important for people's health. Absolutely, yeah, and that's what I said to you about the under eight and under ten girls down in Bellamy Q. It's so important just to be out mixing, and talk and laugh and you don't have to be scoring two six, two seven, two ten in the game. Go out and mix talk. I think talking is and having the crack and having the fun, I think that's more important than anything else. And if you have that and we 
if you have that, it just everything goes off. It. If something goes wrong with the community, the GA club is always there for everyone. Like I'm sure we go to a funeral or removal, the GA club is always there doing something, making tea or organising stuff, or where it's parking cars or stewards or something like that. And it's it's so important. Like I was listening to a podcast a couple of weeks ago, and it was a girl from our man. She was suffering from cancer. Mm. Um, it was the Thomas Thomas Niblock um, podcast. And um, she was saying she was suffering cancer and she had to shave her hair off. And she was involved in a, a, a club up in Armagh. And all the girls was there the night she actually shaved her head off or shaved mm. her hair off. So, um, you know, that's, that's the power of the GA. It, it's such a powerful organization. And there's not an organization in, in the world like it. It's local, it's community. Everyone knows everyone. You win together, you lose together, you go to pub together, you get married together. You, you know, everyone's always there, and that's to me is is so special. And I think that's what makes the G is so, so, so wonderful. You go anywhere in the world, you go to Australia, you go to America, you bring up the conversation to GA. You know, it's 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 a great starting point straight away. And Stephen, obviously looking ahead to Den's year, um, obviously you know, inter, it, up to intermediate. So where where Den probably really belong, and maybe a shot a, a shot at senior status. So what maybe would be the prediction for the lads uh, this year? Because obviously intermediate is very very tricky to win, as we all uh, know. And obviously Castellan got relegated down to it, so they'll be having a big push at it this year, Stephen. So it's my water and stuff. Absolutely, and they've absolutely nothing to fear from that. As I said to you earlier on, earlier on they're, they're young men, they're getting older, like they're 22, 23, 24. Like another year, that makes an awful difference, which they're going in another year. They have a wonderful experience behind them of going through Ulster, going through Cav, and even getting to an All Ireland semi final. They'll use that experience. They'll use that experience. They've got a very good guy in there, Danny, Danny Brady. Them boys, I, I know from what's, what's the back training already, and um, there's good talk there. So, They've absolutely nothing to fear. It is the toughest championship to win that intermediate. You get a good draw, you get into a semi final, you get into a final very easily. I, I, I really do believe that then team will, will end up in senior championship sooner rather than later. 100%, Stephen, 100%. And obviously, uh, what would be the plans for the future? Uh, Bar taking the cabin job? <laughs> no, that will definitely not happen anyway. I think the Bamiki under 8s and under 10s might move up to under 12s next year. I think that will be the, the highlight for the, for the time being anyway. <laughs> 100 uh, just a brief word on uh, Calvin's fortunes at the minute obviously in division four we got um overlining against Sligo uh, last weekend and we've Tipperary on Sunday so it's not where we want to be Stephen but we need to get the hell out of there but um hopefully get a league final out of it a trip up to Croke Park would be lovely but realistically Stephen much like then we are division two division one team absolutely but it's brilliant and I think their their attitude has to be credited as well they're they're sticking to their guns they, they're going to be the team everyone wants to beat in Division 4, and that brings its own pressure. Four wins out of four, that's not easy done, no matter what division you're in. Um, I think the players really deserve great credit for sticking to the task in hand. They could have thrown the ties out of Pram after getting relegated last year. They didn't. Um, it is a really strong panel. Um, I think now you've actually lads wanting to go in and play with Calvin, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, the show in 2020, and I don't think they will fear anyone. You know, you have to remember what through two or three out of the last what's the finals Calvin have been in. So in that in itself, that's that's not a sign of a bad team. They're probably, you know, again, you hear all the negative talk and it's not fair in the players because like we would have seen the work that we put into used to get to a junior club or learn semi-final. Like the, the work that these boys have to put in at that level. You, you have to respect the players for that. It's hours upon hours upon hours. And not only that, it's the sacrifices you make, the family events that you miss, the things you can't go to, and, you know, I think the more support that team can get and the management and players can get, the better. And I think it really will. And I think they will get out of Division 4. And I think that's probably when the bigger challenges start. But, look, I think they're going the right, they are going the right road. There's no two ways about that. Fingers crossed. A uh, brief look ahead to the Championship, obviously, in recent uh, days, Stephen. It seems like a Carrick and Park are nowhere. So uh, what's your opinion on that, uh, Stephen? Uh, because it's creating a lot of debate. And I'm looking at Twitter and I'm ready to throw my phone out the window. Yeah, look, I suppose if, if you're Antrim, you're loving it. If you're Calvin, you're probably saying, oh, Jesus, why did this happen? But it did happen, um, unfortunately. But I suppose the only good thing about it is you have time to that fire to dampen down a little bit. And I'm sure Mickey and, and the team and everyone else will be focused on the job. And it was always going, it's always going to be a tricky challenge in South Antrim. It's going quite well in Division 3. Um, they have been a tricky team against most teams if they're on form. 
but look, I'm sure the boys will will, will know what they're about, and um, maybe Newbridge and Over kind of was thrown in a couple of weeks, and it kind of built momentum over that week or two. Uh, I'm not sure we'll see that in any murals around Belfast or anything else <laughs> like that. But um, no, look, I'm, I'm sure that they'll, they'll they'll handle it their own way, and I think it's a good draw. I think it's done a goal around man in the semi final. They'll probably batter the hell of each other in the semi final. So. They will fear no one. They won't fear Donegal after 2020. They definitely won't fear Armagh after the Buchanan Cup. So you don't know. And also the final could happen very easily, which please God it will. 100%, Stephen. 100%. So his last question, Stephen. Uh, what advice would you give to a, a young person around, I suppose, anywhere at all, Ireland at all, uh, to, to kind of make that uh, next step on to your club team, your county team, or any general life advice, Stephen? Because obviously it is kind of, I know we're out of COVID realistically, but just kind of, it is still worrying times for a lot of people. We're seeing still a lot of tragic events unfolding in the county and beyond, Stephen. So I suppose what advice would you give a young person? I know it's, I know it's tricky these days, but what would you give? Two pieces. Enjoy every bit of it. And if there is an issue or there is a problem, speak to someone because I remember Ben Connerty and Beanie and Leon went to the Joe Duffy uh, show. Um, we The boys did a fantastic fundraiser for um, So Sad in uh, November 2020. And Ben said something that day and it still stuck to me. He goes, I, prefer, I would love to get thousands of calls during the night with lads telling me a problem than that one phone call on a Monday morning that the news you don't want so and in fairness there's loads of help out there even you don't have to go to a council you don't have to go to the first help speak to someone speak to a yeah. friend speak to your brother your sister your, you know the phone call you get that early morning is just it's 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 horrible so look at if there is an issue and there is lots of problems everyone has problems speak to someone about it but as i said to the boys during the campaign enjoy every minute mm-hmm. that is so important enjoy it go out play football if you win fantastic if you don't just enjoy it and i think yeah. that's that's what it's all about i suppose is that slightly lost to a degree Steve? because i know it is so important to kind of keep piping saying like talk to people but are lads doing enough of that because we we see we have seen kind of a lot of tracks and stuff so is it just a case of like really keeping banging the job and i know cabin g is doing a great thing to get her stronger at the minute dr paul gaffney's delivering it around a lot of clubs around cabin so Stephen, it really is so imperative that we just keep banging that drum absolutely and if, if, look if you see someone in trouble or you feel someone's not themselves or whatever go and have a word with them you know, it, it, it is a hard conversation to have with someone, but I guarantee if you actually do it and if they do open up to you and say, no, I'm not feeling well, you know, number one, if you have a problem, if you ask ask for help, you know, if you talk about it, you do feel better, better about it. So, no, I, th- I think the fact that Paul, Paul's a super, super guy, um, and in fairness the county board, they actually are doing a lot of work in this, but it really is up to the person then that does need the help to... Um, Go on and actually speak to people about it because it is it really is so important and i think mental health is, is a word it's, it's become a buzzword unfortunately now i think i don't think the amount of right the, the right amount of respect is, is is put towards it and there's much more than mental health or mental health problem but there's much more to it than that and i think hopefully this educational thing that the Calvin county board will actually see show that i know some speaking to kieran callan about it and um, he's very passionate about it so I think it is going the right road and I know Dan is doing an unbelievable amount of work and they really have been doing a lot of good quality work rather than just ticking a box for the sake of it and look at I'm sure there's people listening to us today that you know th- there's an issue in their life all I'd say is just go speak to someone about it because it can be solved there's no problem that can't be solved. 100% Stephen 100% uh, he fit the nail in the head. Stephen, that was an absolute pleasure. It was it was a great chat. Thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgarich.com and attack.de. Using He's my promo code JMAC podcast to get 15% off on orgarich.com. I get the best skins, gloves, and equipment on attack.de. Be attack minded. And if you like what you've seen, like, subscribe on YouTube. The sport's been absolutely brilliant so far. Stephen, enjoy tonight, the Gaelic life, Ulster All Stars, and uh, have a point because by God, you deserve it. We fully intend to. Cheers, Stephen.